seated. I guess I'm going to get you to say that as much as I can. I heard about a student lifted his hand, and the teacher said, you have a question? And the kid said, yeah. He said, what did I learn today? <laughs> teacher said, that's kind of an odd question. Why would you ask me that? He said, because that's what they're going to ask me when I get home. <laughs> what did you learn today? Hope you're going to learn something tonight. Uh, that's going to help make your tomorrow different than your today. How many want to do better than you're doing right now? Okay, if you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, it just means there's something you don't know. I talked to you this morning about the key, the principles of, of, the, of the word. There's a difference between the person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. And so if you can understand principles, principles are for why you're here. While you're on the earth, God gave us principles all throughout his word. And principles work no matter where you are, no matter who you are. Uh, principles work if you if you work the principles. Uh, I was um, I'm, I'm not a motivational speaker, by the way, uh, and, and and sometimes a lot of times they'll introduce me as a motivational speaker, especially if I'm in the corporate arena or, or in, with one of the sports teams or something like that. And and that's fine. I don't tell them I'm not a motivational speaker um, until after after they pay me, because um, <laughs> they're paying me a lot of money to be one. So I just kind of go with it. But uh, I don't really think there's such any such thing as a motivational speaker. I don't think I can motivate any of you. I think the only person that can motivate you is going to be you. Yeah. yeah, the only you can get up in the morning and decide to do something. You sit here all the time and get full of the word and get full of stuff. But unless you do something with it, nothing's going to change until you change. So I, I'm not really a motivational speaker. I might be an inspirational speaker maybe a little bit. Hopefully I'll inspire you some. But uh, educational speaker, I hope you'll learn something. But my real goal tonight is to be a transformational speaker. That something I say would really transform the way you look at things or think about things that will really cause tonight to be a real major turning point uh, for you and, and for your life. So be listening. Be listening tonight. I, I was going to a meeting one day, and uh, I, I got in the car, and I, I thought I had my keys. I didn't have my keys with me. And I, I started looking for my keys. I'd lost my keys. Anybody ever lost your keys? Has anybody ever looked in places you've never put your keys, for your keys. How many know what I'm talking about? And you start wasting time. You're looking all over for your keys, can't find your keys. You don't want to ever waste time. Time is something you don't want to waste. A lot of people teach on time management. And I don't really, I don't teach on time management because I don't think time is something you manage. I think time is something you invest. So I, I teach on time investment because time, time is a currency. You know, every, every country has a currency. America has the dollar. Mexico has the peso. Japan has the yen. I was just in South Africa last week. They have the rand. Every country has a currency. That's how they operate with that currency. Even heaven has a currency. Uh, heaven, well, the Bible says anything you need from heaven, you receive by what? By faith, right. So faith would be heaven's currency. Earth has a currency. Earth's currency is time. Anything you have today, you've traded your time for. Anything you don't have today, you've been unwilling to trade your time for. But here's the thing. All you have, you traded time. For everything you've got today, you traded time. You traded your time tonight to be here, to learn, to grow. That was a choice, an investment you made of time. So every one of us have the same amount of time. Rich people, I found out, do not have more time than poor people. Uh, they have the same amount of time. Successful people don't have uh, more time than unsuccessful people. Everybody has 24 hours in a day. It's just what they do at the 24 hours that makes all the difference in the world. Uh, I had a mentor of mine ask me how much television I watch every day. I started thinking about it, and, and real quick, I got up to like two hours, two and a half hours. Just I mean, my goodness, by, why, by the time I watch some news in the morning or something, and, and maybe... Um, a show at the family, or I flip on the TV at night before I go to bed or something. I mean, my goodness, two hours a day. Uh, I read the other day the average American watches six hours of television a day. Okay, if there's 24 hours in a day, there's 24 boxcars on your train to success. Every day your train lines up for that day, 24 boxcars. What you put in each of those boxcars determines what you get at the end of the day. So if six of your boxcars are filled with, with t CSI Miami, <laughs> CSI Las Vegas, CSI New York, <laughs> there's a lot of CSIs, aren't there? Think about this. What if you took out one CSI? 
right? One hour. Take out one, not not Miami. That's a, that's awesome. CSI Miami. That's the best one. But if you take out one of the other, but if you took one hour a day and invested in yourself, read a book. Listen to a video, a podcast, something that will make your tomorrow different than your today. You say, I don't have time to learn something new. It, one hour a day, skip lunch, get up an hour early, turn the TV off for an hour. In, an, an, in one year, you say, I don't have time to learn something new. In one year, that's 365 hours. I would, that's what, about nine 40-hour work weeks? Nine or ten 40 hour work weeks. I would say you could pretty much be an expert on any subject you desired if you just took an hour a day to invest in yourself. I just don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Just not enough time in a day to get everything done. It's it, I, a lady almost ran me off the road the other day doing her makeup in the car. You know, <laughs> didn't have enough time. I guess to do it. Saw someone shaving in the car. It's weird. Had her leg up on the dashboard. It's, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, um, but listen, if you understand, if you understand, you only got 24 hours in a day. So, how you invest the time? Well, th this day I couldn't find my keys. I'm looking all over for my keys. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I have a place now just inside the garage. My wife put this little thing where we can hang our keys. When we get out of the car, before we go in the house, we just hang our keys there. So, anytime we need our keys, we know right where they are. It's called order. Order is the accurate arrangement of things. Now, because I've created order, I'm not wasting time. Now, if you understand order, have you ever straightened up the shoes in your closet and when you got done, you felt like you could conquer the world? <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about, that feeling? Straighten up your garage, your desk, something. All the things, like, what else can I do? You feel like you can do anything. Why? Because you created order. Why do you feel so good about that? Because God is a God of order. So when you straight up the shoes in your closet, you're actually doing a godly thing. That's why you feel so good about it. So anyway, when you, when you understand all that, uh, understand the power of time, you start thinking different. Like my, my time, you ever had someone go, hey, just wasting some time. Thought I'd come see what you were doing. <laughs> I'm like, now you're wasting my time too, you know. Uh, so my, my, t my, my meetings have a beginning time and an ending time. If I don't value my time, no one else will value my time. So if we say, hey, we're going to meet at 9 o'clock and you show up at 9, 10, doesn't mean you get 10 extra minutes. And if you show up late to a meeting with five people and you're 10 minutes late, you didn't just waste 10 minutes, you wasted 50 minutes. Because you wasted 10 minutes for each person times five. That's, see, when you begin to understand the value of time, the Bible talks a lot about it. Anyway, that's not even what I'm supposed to talk about tonight. I, just, I don't even know how I got on that. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to talk about focus in a little bit. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, time is, is important. <laughs> what was I talking about anyway? I don't even I have no clue. Oh, I know what I was talking about, keys. <laughs> Losing your keys. Finally, I found my keys. Remember, I told you I was going to a meeting and I lost my keys. That's where I was going with this. So finally, I found my keys. I got in the car, started the car, headed to the meeting. I got about five minutes down the road, and all of a sudden, it hit me. You know, the only thing that was keeping me between my house, where I was, and the meeting that I needed to be at, between where I was and where I wanted to be, the only thing that was keeping me between those two places was a key. I didn't need to find my whole key ring. How many know it doesn't take a lot of keys to start your car? Just takes one key, right? A uh, one little key can open up a big bank vault. A small hinge can swing open a big door. What I'm saying is, tonight I'm going to give you some keys, but there will be one key that you'll say, you know what, Dave? That's the one I needed right there. One key to get you moving. One key to get you started, headed in the right direction. So write a few things down tonight, but be listening for a key. Right, something that jumps out of you says, you know what, that's gonna that's gonna help. But like I said, I'm gonna give you a few keys tonight. I, I believe will be a a blessing to get you going in the right direction. Again, what an honor it is to to get to hang out with you again tonight, and uh, I'm just so uh, thankful. And Pastor this morning said I was family, so hopefully he won't make me wait so long before he lets me come back next time. Now that we're related. But uh, how many love your pastors? How many are thankful for them? 
<laughs> and they're just awesome and uh, just so grateful for their friendship. But let me show you this scripture here, Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. It says, the book of the law, that's the Bible, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you'll be careful to do everything that's in it, uh, for then you will make your way prosperous. How many want to be prosperous? And you will have, uh, and, and then you will be successful. The Bible talks a lot about success. It says if you commit your plans to him, he will cause them to succeed. If you meditate on his word day and night, you'll make your way prosperous and you will be successful. So obviously we can see that the Bible wants us to succeed. The Bible, it's God's plan for us to do well. He doesn't want us struggling, barely getting by. Plus, part of the reason for your success is so that you can be an example to others. People are watching you. I don't think Christians, I don't think every broke down car on the side of the road should have Christian bumper stickers on it. I don't think that's God's, God's plan for us. So, so as I begin to say this and I begin to look at it, I notice some things. And people say, what got you so into this personal growth and, and development? And, and I, like I said, I love people that would come out and invest tonight uh, in learning and growing and developing. There, there's a beautiful poem um, that I think is, is great. I love it for nights like tonight. Um, how many have ever heard that poem, Footprints in the Sand? Let me see if you've heard that. That poem, okay, that's not the, the poem I'm going to tell you. Uh, I just wondered if you ever heard of that one. But, uh, uh, no, it, it's similar. It's similar, but it, it's a little different. But I think it's great for, for people that, w that really want to really wanna grow. But it says, one night I had a wondrous dream. One set of footprints there was seen. The footprints of my precious Lord, but mine were not along the shore. But then some stranger prints appeared. I asked the Lord, what have we here? Those prints are large and round and neat, but, Lord, they are too big for feet. My child, he said in somber tones, for miles I carried you all alone. I challenged you to walk in faith, but you refused and made me wait. You disobeyed, you would not grow. The walk of faith you would not know. So I got tired and fed up, and there I dropped you on your butt. For in life there comes a time when one must fight and one must climb, when one must rise and take a stand or leave their butt prints <laughs> in the sand. I told you it's a little different, but, I, but here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you don't get up and do something with all this, you're just going to sit there and do nothing. And so it's really, it's really a choice. And, and people say, what got you so into this personal growth and development? And Pastor and I were talking about this guy. I began to study uh, successful people. I began to find that, that there, were, there was different things in their life that caused them to be successful. And in studying that, I came across a guy by the name of Sir Edmund Hillary. Sir Edmund Hillary is the first man to ever climb to the top of Mount Everest. First man to summit Mount Everest, which is pretty amazing. I, I, and I remember reading the story. I thought, man, he just got up one day. He went out there, and he made it to the top. Other guys tried, didn't make it, but he did. He's the best, and that's awesome. As I studied the story a little more, I found out he didn't make it the first time. He tried again. He didn't make it the second time either. You know, he had tried several times before they finally made it. And this isn't just a one-day thing. This is like days and days of a journey when they give up and go back. And days and days of preparation and before they give up and they go back. This wasn't like just get up one day, walk outside, and climb up there. No, but he, he did something I thought was very interesting. Remember I told you all these principles are in the Bible? Have you ever heard the story? I think it's in Matthew uh, where, where it talks about speaking to your mountain and command your mountain to. Well, Sir Edmund Hillary did this. He went out and he spoke to his mountain. He said to the mountain, he, he looked at Mount Everest, and he said to Mount Everest, he said, I will come again and conquer you, because as a mountain, you cannot grow, but as a human, I can. 
And it's a really powerful thing because no matter how big your mountain is, as a human, you have the ability to grow, to develop, to gain wisdom that will make your tomorrow different than your today. And so in that, I came up with three things, three things I want to give you tonight that I, I, want, I hope you'll remember and, uh, and help you get moving in the right direction. Number one, growth is not automatic. It's your responsibility. Number one, growth is not automatic. It's your responsibility. You're only young once. You can be immature indefinitely. So growth is a, is a choice. It, like I said this morning, if you want tomorrow to be different than today, you've got to learn something today in order to make tomorrow different. So it's my responsibility. If I'm going to, if I'm going to grow, it's, it's up to me. Uh, uh, like I said, first of the year, doctor, my doctor gave me a physical. He said, Dave, you need to lose 25 pounds. Well, if I'm going to change, it's my responsibility. I could blame others, and I did. I'm like, that's not my fault. That's Krispy Kreme's fault. I need to lose this weight. I didn't make that red light flash. Y'all have Krispy Kremes? Is there Krispy Kreme here with the red light? You know what I'm talking about when the red light flashes when they're hot? Like, that's the flames of hell, that red light. It's the devil trying to kill you. Um, but if, 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 you know, that light, I'm just minding my own business. That light comes on, like, my mind's telling me no, but my body. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> I'm, I've been clean. I've been off the Krispy Kremes about nine months. I've been clean. I've been clean now about nine months. And uh, I, was doing, I was doing good. I was, about three months ago, I did have a relapse. I don't even remember what happened. I, I, I was minding my own business, just driving, probably listening to some worship music. That red light flashed. I blacked out. I don't even remember. I came to, covered in glaze. I'm shaking. I'm like, but see, here's the thing. My decision yesterday to eat the donut got me to the place I am today, 25 pounds overweight. So my decision starting today or Maybe tomorrow, because I had some ice cream this afternoon. But um, I, I was doing real good till I saw this T-shirt the other day. It said, fat people are harder to kidnap. <laughs> I'm like, I got to, yeah, I, like, I got to protect myself, you know. It's, it's dangerous. It could be dangerous out there. But, but listen, if, if you don't make personal growth your responsibility, it's never going to happen. The road to anything worthwhile is always uphill. So the sooner you get started, the sooner you'll get to reaching your God-given potential. You know, the reason first grade desks are so small is because you're not supposed to be sitting in them when you're 23. <laughs> right? You're supposed to learn. You're supposed to grow. It's your responsibility in this in this book i wrote the 12 traits of the greats the first chapter in here is on responsibility because I, I think if you can't get past that chapter none of the rest of them are going to matter anyway as long as you keep blaming everybody else for your problem you have a choice you can be a victim or you can be a victor right you can you can say well it's there if you don't learn to master the, the things that have happened and i know circumstances and situations happen in our life sometimes that are beyond our control but unless you learn to master them, you'll spend your whole life being controlled by your past. I was just in South Africa. It's the 100-year anniversary or 100-year. It would be the 100-year birthday of Nelson Mandela this year. And I was thinking of this great man. I mean, people stopped, leaders from all over the world stopped to celebrate his life when he passed away. I went to Robben Island just off the coast of Cape Town where over 25 years they held him unjustly in a little prison cell there on that island. When he came out, he could have came out mad. He could have came out angry. I mean, unjustly held for over 25 years. He could have came, I'm going to show these, I'm going to get, no, but instead he decided to forgive. He, instead he decided to make a difference. He went on to win a Nobel Peace Prize and change an entire nation. So you have a choice. You have a choice. And like I said, the whole thing is, is your responsibility. How you look at it, how you look at it, like anything. You can find the positive or you can find the negative, right? In, in these, how, many, how many have to work at being positive? Be honest. Yeah, I, I do. I, I'm, I'll be honest. People say, you're a motivational speaker. You don't have to worry. No, I, every day, I, man, I, my goodness, I'm, I was born a pessimist. 
My, my blood type is even B negative. <laughs> you know, so I mean, this is this is hard work, but it's a choice, right? It's a choice. It's all how you, it's all in how you look at it. You know, you ever notice that? You ever notice two people can look at the same person and see them completely different? You see them one way, you're like, oh, oh, that, 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 someone else, oh, no, they're great. No, oh, you don't know that person like I know that person. You know what I'm talking about? Like, the girl brings her boyfriend home to meet her parents. They come in. He's got crazy hair, tattoos all over, piercings. Mom says, ooh, honey, come here for a minute. He does not look like a very nice young man. That's the way the mom sees it. Daughter sees it completely different. She goes, he's a great young man. My goodness, he's given 200 hours of community service right now. It's all in how you look at it, you know. <clears throat> I told that joke the other day. This big guy came up after church. He goes, you against tattoos? <laughs> He's pretty big. I'm like, I'm not, no, I'm, I, it was just a joke. <laughs> like, I'm not judging anybody, you know, whatever you want to, you know, whatever. <laughs> he said, you have any tattoos? I said, I personally, I don't, I don't have any tattoos. You, know, you wouldn't put a bumper sticker on a Ferrari. But, uh, I mean, it's all in how you look at it. That's what I'm saying. It's just all in, just all in how you look at it. So, I'm kidding. Okay, so I love this, this quote, this quote by Henry Ford. He said, it's been my observation that successful people get ahead during the time that other people waste. Successful people get ahead during the time that other people waste. It goes back to what we said at the very beginning. You can waste time or you can get in there and learn and develop. Take responsibility. If tomorrow's going to be different than today, you, I, I'd love to be doing better than I'm doing right now. Just means there's something you don't know. Proverbs 1 verse 5 said, if you're smart, you'll get smarter. That's what it says. Smart people get smarter. I mean, my goodness, it, 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 that's what the Bible said. So why would I not take responsibility to keep learning and growing and developing the best I can? Another trait of great achievers is the imagination. The imagination. It's something we don't talk about a lot at church. I'll just mention it here real quick because I mentioned it this morning about my dream wall. Remember that? Uh, because the imagination or visualization, it, we don't hear about a lot at church because people think, oh, it might be new age. Sounds kind of new age visualizing stuff. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Walt Disney did that, didn't he? You know, I, they, they were interviewing Miss Disney at, at the uh, grand opening of Disney World in Orlando, Florida, the Magic Kingdom in Orlando, Florida. Walt had died about five years before the grand opening of Disney World in Orlando, Florida. They said, isn't it sad that Walt never got to see this place? She said, oh, Walt saw this place, saw it before any of us. That's why it's here today. His imagination he used to say, well, that, that, that's not in the Bible, that kind of stuff. Jim Carrey used that too, you know. Jim Carrey in the early 90s used to be on a show called In Living Color. He did stand-up comedy, stuff like that, but he wanted to be in movies. You know, in 1991, Jim Carrey wrote himself a check for $10 million. And he said, by, and, he had the, and he dated the check, 1994. By 1994, I want to be in a major motion picture, and I want to get paid $10 million. He wrote the date on the check, everything. Anyway, carried it in his wallet every time he'd see it. See, something has to be seeable before it's believable, believable before it's achievable. And so he had to get a picture of where he was going. And so every time he'd open his wallet, to make a long story short, within two weeks of the date he had written on the check four years earlier, he signed the deal for the movie Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. And guess how much they paid him? $10 million. And so you say, okay, that, that's nice, Walt Disney, Jim Carrey, but again, that's not in the Bible. Well, it's in the Bible a lot of places. Uh, Abraham, here's one. Abraham, you're going to have children, and your children will have children, and you'll have so many descendants, they'll cover the earth. Ab and he, Abraham's like, I'm 100 years old. I don't see that happening. God says, Abraham, come out of your tent. Come out here. Look up in the sky. See those stars? As numerous as the stars in the sky will be the children that will come after you. He looked up and he had thousands of stars. He had him visualize. He had him look and see through visualization what his future would look like. You don't think Pastor can already see the walls busted out here and all the seats filled with people? 
you know, you, you look on that little envelope, there's a drawing of, of what the front may be going to look like. Why? So we can visualize it. So we can see what it's going to be. That's why we get the drawings. David, again, another one of my favorite people in the Bible. I love to study successful people, and David's one of my favorite. I mean, I love King David. Killed Goliath. That was awesome, wasn't it? Love that story. Remember that story? He killed Goliath, cut his head off. I love that. Anyway, um, David's the first person I found to really get ahead in life. <laughs> right, that was a bad one. But anyway, he, I mean, they can't all be that good, right? You got to have a bad one every now and then. Anyway, David, whoever kills the giant gets his bills paid off, no more taxes, and you get to marry the king's daughter. And if you read the scripture, David says, hold on. Tell me one more time what you get if you kill the giant. Why did David ask him to repeat it one more time? I think he started picturing it. He's just taking lunch to his brothers because, wait, if I kill the giant, I get my bills paid off. He saw that big red stamp paid in full. On all, I don't have to pay taxes. Taxes, zero. And, I, and you get to marry the king's daughter. Huh. All right. I'll fight a giant. Why all of a sudden was he willing to fight a giant? He got a picture of the money and the honey, right? <laughs> and now he's out there fighting this giant. So every one of us, God gave every one of us a fast forward button and a rewind button. Your fast forward button is to pre-play your future. Your rewind button is to replay your past. What, what, what do you mean? David, fast forward in the future. Bill's paid off. No more taxes. King's daughter. Saw where he was going. What's the next thing he did? He hit his rewind button, and he went back, and he started remembering the bear. Remember I killed that bear? That was pretty awesome, kill a bear. I'm sure I can kill a giant if I can kill a bear. Oh, and I killed a lion once. He started remembering the lion that he killed. Here's what I learned. Little victories always lead to big successes. So keep track along the way of all the little things you accomplish. So rewind, fast forward. We all have the, the, this ability. So get a picture. I, I told you this morning I had a, a, a picture on my a, a board on my, or a wall in my house where all I have on that wall are pictures of things I want in the future. How many of you got some place you like to go on vacation? Anybody got a place you like to take your family or you like to go? I always wanted to take my family on the Disney cruise. I thought that would be awesome. So I, cut, I got a, the brochure, and I cut out the Disney ship, and I put it up on the wall. One day, we're going to go on a Disney cruise. I wanted to make videos so I could make uh, coaching videos because when I go speak somewhere, you know, I get an hour with you, an hour and a half, something like that. But, but for I, so I could really get into stuff more, I wanted to make coaching videos that people could take home with them and learn. And, and so I cut out all the equipment and the cameras and all that I put up on the wall. I told you about the $100,000 check I put up there. One day, I'm going to give $100,000. Like I, I, this was my first wall. Oh, I wanted a tour bus. I don't even know why. Anyway, I put a picture of a tour bus up on the wall. One day, I'll have a tour bus. And, and so I got all these pictures of things I, I want on the wall. And be careful, by the way, what you put up there. That, that tour bus, I remember I called a guy. He had one. I said, hey, I said, do you ever rent that tour bus? He said, oh, no, I don't, I don't ever rent it. He said, well, I am trying to sell it. I said, well, I'm not really in a position to buy one of those buses. I mean, brand new, they're like a million dollars. Even used, they're two or $300,000. So I'm, like, I'm not really in a position to buy one. Uh, but, but he goes, you know what? He goes, I'll tell you what. If you'll buy my bus today, I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. Well, I'm always into a deal I can't refuse. I said, what, you? I said, what are you thinking? He said, listen, I just bought a Cadillac. He said, if you'll pay off my Cadillac today, he said, I'll give you the title and you can have the bus. And I said, what, what kind of Cadillac did you get? Because <laughs> I knew used even. They were two or $300,000 even when they were used. He said, I just bought an Escalade. I owe $35,000 on it. He said, if you'll bring me $35,000 today, you can have the bus. And I bought that bus right there for $35,000. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal. What's even cooler, that was, it was the, that's the Backstreet Boys tour bus. Remember the Backstreet Boys, that group? I bought, Pastor, I bought the Backstreet Boys. I'm like, I'm going to be famous. You, you, you're not all that famous. You got to drive yourself around in the bus. I'm the driver. <laughs> so, anyway, 
I wanted to be famous, but one time my uncle drove, though. That was pretty cool. It's like we had a driver. <laughs> anyway. I had like four guys with me. I remember I'd spoke in Miami, and we were on our way back to Orlando on, in the bus. And there were like four or five of us guys, and my uncle's driving. And we, we stopped eating, so we pull off the interstate into this restaurant. We pull in this big tour bus, right? People are looking. They're watching. Like, I wonder who that is. And so, like, we, we, four, we walk in. First lady in the restaurant, she goes, are you guys famous? <laughs> and I said, yes. I did. I repented. I repented for lying. But um, I just wanted to be famous at least once, you know. <laughs> but that's why you don't lie, because then she's like, I knew it. Who are you? So then you got to lie again. That's not good. You know, I'm like, you, you don't remember us. We were, we were big in the 80s. Like, we're, we're, we're just hanging tough, man. We're, we're the new kids on the block. Anyway, I was going to tell them we were new addition. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think they'd believe me. I was like, Mr. Telephone Man. I'm like, come on, Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. <laughs> anyway. anyway, we sold the bus. We sold the bus for a lot more money than what I bought it for. Thank you, Jesus. But all I'm saying is you got to get a picture. Like the Disney Cruise. I just got back off the Disney Cruise a couple weeks ago. I've been on a few of those now. Why? Something has to be seeable before it's believable, believable before it's achievable. Use this power of your imagination to get a picture of where it is you're going in, in the future. Keep learning. Keep growing. Keep developing. It's so important to get you where you want to be and what you want to accomplish. The great basketball coach John Wooden said this. He said, what counts most is what you learn after you know it all what counts most is what you learn after you know it all what see the, the the thing is the more you learn a lot of times the less you think you have to learn and then you become unteachable so you never want to get to a place where you're unteachable few people dedicate themselves to the process of personal growth and development main reason I believe is because growth requires change and most people don't like to change. They're uncomfortable with change. But if you don't change, you won't grow. And if you don't grow, you're going to die. You're either growing or you're dying. So it's important that you, you deal with the change in order to grow and become everything you were created to be. People say, why are you so into all this growth and wisdom and learning? And, 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 and part of the reason is because I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't want to keep making mistakes. I made a lot of those. And another reason is maybe because the people I grew up around, I didn't want to turn out like them. They weren't the smartest people. <laughs> I grew up in Mississippi. Not that everybody in Mississippi is not smart, but most of them aren't. <laughs> um, I remember one time this lady in my neighborhood, she got up one morning, went out to get her newspaper, and when she, she noticed a dead body in her yard. She ran back in the house, called 911. She goes, there's a body in my yard. They said, okay, ma'am, we'll be right there. Where are you located? She said, I'm at 423 Sycamore Street. They said, I'm at 423 Sycamore. Okay, ma'am, we'll be right there. Can you spell Sycamore? She said, what, well, can't you all spell that? 911, she, they said, we can't spell it. Can you spell it? It's your address. She said, okay, uh, it's uh, C Y. Uh, no, S C Y S. She, she goes, Can I just drag the guy over to Elm? <laughs> you see, that's the kind of people I grew up around. You don't want to turn out like that. So that'll get you into wisdom right there. So you just want to keep learning and growing and, 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 and be, be teachable. Number, number two, number two. <laughs> Growth today brings success tomorrow. Growth today. Bring success tomorrow. What you sow today determines what you reap tomorrow. Uh, anybody ever heard of a guy named Roger Bannister? A couple people. Roger, Roger Bannister, he's the first human being to ever run a mile in under four minutes. It was back in 1954 when he did it. No one had ever done it before. I mean, you can't do it. People aren't, well, our, our muscles aren't made that way. Humans can't do that. Humans can't run that fast. It's just not possible. 
It wasn't possible until 1954 when Roger Bannister did it. Now, what's amazing is in 1955, 30 people ran a mile in under four minutes. In 1956, over 100 people did it. Today, you can go to a high school track meet and see people do it. But what changed back in 1954 when Roger Bannister did it? What changed? Did, did the way we run change? Did the muscle change? What, what changed? Yeah, that's right. My, our thinking changed. It wasn't a time barrier that was broken that day. It was a mind barrier that was broken that day. Well, if he can do it, why can't I do it? If it's possible for him, why wouldn't it be possible for me? It, it, it all began in people's thinking or in their, in their mindset. I've learned this. Life will not allow you to enjoy more success than you think you deserve. Like I said this morning, I'd like to have a house like that. I doubt we'd ever be able to have a house like that. You're right. I'd love to have my own business. I'd probably never be able to have my own business. You're absolutely right. Because whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right. If the way that you have thought and the way that you believed up until now was capable of producing everything you desire, then you'd probably already have what you desire. How many have got things in your life you don't have yet that you want to accomplish, that you want to see happen, that you want to? So obviously the way you think and believe right now is not producing that. So obviously maybe there's some wrong thinking or wrong believing that may have caused that. So what if you begin to deal with your BS a little bit, uh, your belief systems? <laughs> We're in church. What did y'all think I was saying? If you don't start dealing with your BS, that's like the other day, you catch people off guard. You know, the other day I, I was speaking at a big conference. I told everyone that I was LGBT. <laughs> Love God, big tither, right? I, I thought that's what that, L, anyway, so, um, So my goal is always to introduce people to a new way of thinking or a new way of looking at things. And, and we, 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 we actually have to talk about reprogramming sometimes the way we think or the way we see things because we develop these belief systems. Like I said, I grew up poor. And we thought if someone had a nice car, oh, they must be doing something illegal. <laughs> you know, I remember driving to church sweating in the back of our car because we didn't have air conditioning, Right? Well, we had air conditioning, but it was broke, and we couldn't afford to get it fixed. But my dad made us leave the windows rolled up because he didn't want anyone to know we didn't have air conditioning. <laughs> so we were poor, but we were proud, right? <laughs> and I remember on the way to church, we had to drive through this one neighborhood of real nice houses. You know, houses with swimming pools, and, 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 and we'd be in the back of the car, and people, we'd look out there, people at the pool drinking lemonade, just enjoying themselves. My dad would look at me and my brother and say, boys, you see those folks? we say, yes, sir. He said, those folks are miserable. <laughs> we're in the back of a car with no air condition. I mean, I'm looking at my brother going, man, I wish we were miserable. It was the way we were programmed, the way we thought, the way we, the way we saw things, like, like, uh, like money is the root of all evil. Well, that's not true. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. So how do I change my programming to believe? We mentioned it this morning. Uh, it's not money uh, that's the root of all evil. Money is the root of good vacations. It's changing the way you look at something. It's reprogramming the way you see things. Now, I, I love people that have this just renewed mind, just believe in themselves, just can go for it. I love movies like Rudy. Have you ever seen that movie, Rudy? I mean, I just love them. It's inspiring. I love inspiring movies. Invincible. I don't know if you saw that. Or Rocky. Everybody saw a Rocky movie. Anybody saw a Rocky movie? Yeah. I mean, I mean you, how many after the Rocky movie, you feel like you can do anything, Right? Like, I remember after watching the Rocky movie, thinking, like, I hope someone says something to me. <laughs> I could hear the music. I'm like, just try, you know. But it's that unshakable belief that he had in himself. And what if we could develop that kind of belief system? I mean, if you really believe with God, all things are possible. 
if you really believe some of the, the scriptures that we that we read and that we see, I believe this. Once your mind, the, the key to thinking big, and we might as well think big, we serve a big God. The key to thinking big is exposure. The key to thinking big is exposure. It, it's seeing things different. I think it was Oliver Wendell Holmes that said it this way. Once your mind is stretched with a new idea, it will never regain its original dimension. Once your mind is stretched, you ever had like uh, maybe a t-shirt that you really just stretched out and it never went back to where it was before? You know what I'm talking about? It's some socks or something that just gets stretched out too far. But that, the same with your mind. Once your mind is stretched with a new idea, it can't go back to where it was before. So you got to keep thinking bigger. I'll give you a, a real simple example. Like I said, we grew up poor. Hardly ever went out to dinner, out to restaurants to eat. But I'll never forget the first time we were out at a restaurant to eat, and my dad let me order a steak. I'd never had steak before. I'd had a hamburger, had some chicken. I'd never had a steak. And here we are at the restaurant, and, and my, my dad says, son, tonight, if you want a steak, you can have a steak. Whew. I never forget. I never forget that day that plate came out to the table, and I remember cutting into that steak. It was so tender and juicy, and oh, and I just I had no idea that Denny's could make a steak like that, right? <laughs> it was amazing, and I, I remember. I remember calling my friends, going, "Have you ever had a steak, man? Denny's best steaks I've ever had." You want a good steak, you got to go to Denny's. And I'm telling everybody about the steaks at Denny's. They were the best steaks I'd ever had. Of course, they were the only steaks I'd ever had, which made them the best steaks. That's as far as my mind had been stretched. And for years, I thought Denny's made the best steaks. Until one day, one day I had a steak at Chili's. Forget Denny's, man. Chili's is the place for steak. I'm telling everyone, forget what I said. Chili's, best steaks I've ever had. And I'm telling everyone about the steaks. And for the longest time, I thought Chili's had the best steaks. Until one day, someone took me to this place called Ruth's Chris. Oh, oh man. Did you feel that? I felt that for a second. My God. They bring it out on a 500-degree plate. I mean, it's still cooking with it. Oh, man. Forget Chili's. Forget Denny's. Roos Chris. Now, that's the place you got to. How many understand what I'm saying? Every time my mind was stretched, it couldn't go back to where it was before. I fly all the time. Happy to be on the airplane. Fly coach. No big deal. Walk right past first class. Never even thought about it one bit. Just happy to be on the plane. One day, they messed up my flights. Had to reroute me. They apologized. Said, Mr. Martin, we're going to give you a first-class seat. I was fine sitting in coach. But that day, they gave me a first-class seat. I was fine sitting in coach. I was until they gave me that first-class seat. Now, oh, man, next flight, it was, I was back in coaching, and it was horrible. I was miserable. My back hurt. It was I had no idea. I forgot how small the seats were. Because now my mind's been stretched. I think first class is better for me. Here's what I learned through all that. Once your heart decides a destination, your mind will begin to design a map to get you there. Once your heart decides a destination, your mind will begin to design a map to get you there. So what does that mean? It means I decided first class is better for me. So what happens? My mind goes to work. How could I get up there again? Well, if you only fly this airline, pretty soon you'll get some status. Once you got some status, you start getting upgrades. I could get back up there again. If I got a credit card, why not get one with this airline? Then every time I use it, I can get points. I could trade those points in. They'd give me some first-class seats. I could figure out how to make more money. I could just buy a first-class seat if I had more money. I could just do that. All of a sudden, I'm trying to figure out all the ways to get back up there because now I've decided... First class for me is better than coach. Coach is purgatory. <laughs> so you understand what I'm saying? That's a, those are a couple of simple examples. But I'm just saying, look for ways to stretch the way you see things. Stretch what you're doing. Stretch the, the way you see things. Anyway, uh, um, an, another is, is it's all part of getting wisdom, getting understanding, and, and learning and growing. If you want tomorrow to be different than today, 
uh, keep learning, keep growing, keep developing. Like I said, the Bible's full of, uh, of, of all that. Proverbs 1, verse 5, a wise person will increase in learning. Proverbs 2, uh, the Lord will grant you a spirit of wisdom. Proverbs 3, wisdom is more valuable than silver. It's more profitable than gold. It's more precious than Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> Proverbs 4, hey, whatever you do, get wisdom. Whatever you do, get with wisdom will protect you. Wisdom will promote you. Then it starts telling us all the values of having wisdom. Remember I told you this morning, the only problem you'll ever have is a wisdom problem. Wisdom will protect you. I always thought God would protect me. The Bible says it's wisdom that protects me. You ever thought, how in the world does wisdom protect you? Now, let me ask you, if you drove tonight, uh, how many locked your car out in the parking lot? Let me see if you locked your car. Okay, okay, look for who didn't. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Why did you lock your car? Why did you lock your car? Don't you trust God? Of course we trust God, right? We just don't trust the people that might get in our car. So God gives you wisdom to protect you. Wisdom says lock your door. It keeps you protected. See how wisdom protects you. And so you understand, in God we trust. Yeah, and everyone else, check out thoroughly. So understand, when you understand the value of wisdom, how do you get wisdom? How do you get it? Three ways you can get it. Number one, you can get wisdom from your mistakes. Which, by the way, is the slowest way to get wisdom. The slowest way to get it is to learn from your mistakes. We're all going to make them, but here's a better way. How many would rather get your wisdom? second way to get wisdom is mentors. Mentors. It's a little quicker. I mean, how many would rather get your wisdom from, say, Pastor Al's mistakes? If I could learn from his mistakes and not have to make them myself, that'd be crazy not to do that. That's called mentorship. If I, it's learning from other people's mistakes. I called one of my mentors the other day. I said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? He said, oh, man. I said, I wouldn't do that if I was you. I said, why not? I think it's a great idea. He said, yeah, so did I. He already did it. He found out it didn't work. Now he just saved me three months of work. $40,000 of investment. Why? Because he'd already done what I was thinking about doing. So I'd be crazy. People say there's no shortcut to success. I don't believe that. I believe your mentors are your shortcut to success. A good mentor, a good coach will save you from making a lot of mistakes. The third way to get wisdom is the quickest, easiest way. You can buy it. You can buy wisdom. I can go to the bookstore and I can buy a book. What took someone their entire lifetime to figure out, I can learn in three hours for 20 bucks. I'd be crazy not to buy books. You go to my house, I got over 4,000 books. Why? Too much stuff I don't know. I can't go to Barnes and Noble without spending two or 300 bucks. I get in there, there's too much stuff I don't know. I got to have that book. I got to have that book. I was at a meeting one time uh, with a guy by the name of Peter J. Daniels. Anybody ever heard of Peter J. Daniels? Anybody? Peter J. Daniels, a wealthy businessman from Australia. One of the wealthiest men in Australia. I went to a seminar he was doing. It cost me about, I think, $3,000 to go to his seminar. But he's doing better than I'm doing, so obviously he knows something I don't know. And if the difference between where I am and where I want to be is what I know, I'll invest whatever I can to find out what I don't know. So I went to his seminar. He's teaching. I'm writing notes as fast as I can. At the end, he goes, I've got books, CDs. He told us about a bunch of stuff he had. And he said, I, I encourage you to make yourself available to those. Well, he knows something I don't know, so I'm going to find out what it is. I want to know what he knows that I don't know. So I ran back to the table. I said, I want everything on this table. They said, you want everything? I said, everything. They added it up. They said, if you buy everything back here, it's $1,600 for everything on the table. And um, I didn't know he knew that much stuff. I wasn't expecting it to be that much, $1,600. I was like, man, my friend was with me. He said, man, that's crazy. I said, that's a lot. He said, you think it's worth it? I started thinking. I said, you know what? I think I'm worth it. I don't know, a book, $20 for a book. You think it's worth it? Are you worth 20 bucks? I mean, if you don't think you're worth 20 bucks, I doubt anybody else is going to think you're worth 20 bucks either. So I don't buy books I think the paper's worth it. I buy books because I think I'm worth it. Plus, then I remembered that the Bible said wisdom is more valuable than silver. It's more profitable than gold. It's more precious than rubies. 
And I'm thinking, well, $1,600 is cheaper than all that. So obviously, according to the Bible, this is a pretty good deal. Plus, how many have ever made a mistake that cost you more than $1,600? Yeah, most of us probably have. When if we'd have had wisdom, maybe we wouldn't have made I said, I'll take it. I'm going to take it all. See, there's three ways to see yourself. You can see yourself the way other people see you, which may be good. It, it, it may not be good. I don't know. I, I learned a long time ago, though, what other people think about you is none of your business. Quit going through your whole life worrying about what everyone else thinks about you all the time. Eleanor Roosevelt said it this way. She said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So quit going through your whole life worrying about what everyone else thinks. Second way to see yourself is how you see yourself. Uh, that's called uh, self-esteem, right? Good self-confidence, good self-esteem. We all want to have a good self-esteem. But then again, we've all had people say things to us, do things to us that could affect our self-esteem. I mean, if we held on to stuff, people did. So my, even my own self-confidence can, can waver. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of issues with self-confidence. I mean, my goodness, I used to have such low self-esteem. One time I painted a blue square in my backyard just so Google Earth would think I had a pool. <laughs> I don't even know them. You see what I'm saying? It's just, but things happened, you know, in life. Things happened. One time in high school, one time in high school, this girl broke up with me. She said, I'm breaking up with you. You got low self-esteem. I was like, great, that, that helped, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, if you think about things that happen through your life, I mean, just another time in high school, this girl called me. She goes, hey, come over to my house. Nobody's home. I went over there. Nobody was home. I just, I just kept knocking. Nothing. That hurts. That's hurtful and damaging. The third way to see yourself, the third way to see yourself is to see yourself the way God sees you. It's one thing to see yourself the way other people see you. It's one thing to see yourself that way you see you. But if you could get a picture of yourself the way God sees you, see the picture God has of you, uh, well, let's just say, I think God's got pictures of all of us up on the walls of heaven. And the picture God has, let's just say God has got some, some mad Photoshop skills. Because your picture looks good. I, I mean, he's touched you up a little bit. You know, you know, in the magazines, everybody looks perfect because they've been, they've been airbrushed, right? They've been touched up a little bit. And that's what God's done with the picture he has of you. He's already removed all the wrinkles of weakness. He's taken out all the blemishes of failure. The picture God has of you is a picture of perfect success. So what if we could learn to live? What most of us do is we take the picture God has of us and we lower it to how we see ourselves. But what if we decided to live into the picture God had of us? We begin to see ourselves the way God saw us. It's one thing to be confident. It's another thing to be Godfident. It's one thing to know who you are. It's a whole other thing to know whose you are. Because your position in life is determined by your position in Christ. So when you know who you are in him, you walk different, you think different, you talk different. So it's all part of knowing who you are. It's all part of the, the mindset and understanding. So anyway, get, get all the, the wisdom. You can, I bought all that stuff. Remember, I, t I bought $1,600. I bought it all. I got one idea. I got a bunch of good stuff. But I got this one really good idea. You know, the billionaire Ross Perot. He said, all it takes is one good idea to live like a king the rest of your life. Just one good, I didn't get a king idea, but I got a pretty good idea. It wasn't bad. I mean, from listening to all those CDs, I invested $1,600, but I got one idea. I sold the idea. I produced the idea. sold it. Within about eight months, it produced a little over $300,000, right? Say, praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all seem a little jealous of my blessings. Just... <laughs> 300,000, that's no big deal. I don't care about that. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How many would be happy if you had a $300,000 idea? Uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> Not mine, just yours. How many would be happy if you had just had like a $50,000 idea? You just like <laughs> How many just hope you have an idea before you die? <laughs> like, my God, I hope I think of something. Here, here's what I'm saying. You always invest in what you find valuable. 
you always invest in what you find valuable. So, so whatever you do, get, get wisdom. Get wisdom. Let me give you number three. Let me give you the last one, and I'll, and I'll, get, I'll get you out of here. Are y'all getting anything out of this? I told you be listening for a key. I mean, if we stopped right now, hopefully a couple of you got keys you could use. So you say, you know what, I can, you know what, real quick, three people, give me one key. If we just stopped right now, you say, you know what, that's going to help me. What you said, that point right there is going to help get me moving in the right direction. Three people, real quick. Let me see somebody, someone right over here. Exposure, the key to thinking big. You got you to stretch your mindset, stretch your thinking. The key to thinking big is exposure. Right over here. Change your thinking. It's all about your mindset. How many would admit you've limited yourself by your own thinking? Yeah. So that's why the Bible says you got to continually renew your mind, continually change the way you look at things. If you change the way you're looking at things, the things that you're looking at will begin to change. It's, it's all throughout the Bible. Someone over here. Little victories always lead to big successes. How many of the dream wall? That kind of stood out to you a little bit. You thought, man, I should make one of those. I should just make. And so all these will help you. Number, number three, last one. Never stay satisfied with your current accomplishments. Never stay satisfied with your current accomplishments. By, by the way, uh, I mentioned this morning, and if you didn't get a hold of these things, uh, talking about wisdom, we were just talking about wisdom, investing in yourself. Uh, the book Another Shot the book Another Shot's all about developing a game plan uh, for coming back. So I, I spent hours and uh, with with athletes, with CEOs, with people that pay thousands and thousands of dollars for coaching. Well, I can't sit down and coach every single person on how to develop their plan. But like I said this morning, you can't leave where you're at until you decide where you'd rather be. So. I took the principles that I teach these people, uh, which they pay a lot of money for, and I put it into this book, and it really helps you to develop your plan. It helps you get from where you are to where you want to be. And uh, so we, we've got a few of those left. It's called Another Shot. It's back there. I didn't have this one this morning. I, I realized I had a, a box of them from a meeting I did earlier in the week, and uh, I didn't even know I had any more of these hardbacks. They found a couple boxes of them. And so this is the hardback, original hardback version of the book I'm talking about tonight, The 12 Traits of the Greats where I spent over a 1,000 hours studying great achievers, whether it's great on the football field, the baseball field, the, ba the battlefield, the business field, the ministry field, whatever field of life, there were 12 common qualities I found from people that achieved great things. Now, every one of us should desire to be great. You're created in God's image, and God is a great God. So I want to be a great dad, great business person, a great speaker, great husband. I want to be great at whatever I do, and so should you. And so I found these 12 common qualities, put them all together in this book called The 12 Traits of the Greats. And so we got just a few of those back there. The books are $20 each, or you can get two of them for 30 so uh, the book's $20 each, or you can get two. I gave you two of these for 30 this morning. I forgot I had these. So if you want for $30, you can get both these books, get you a little library started. You know what I found? The most successful people have the biggest libraries. Yeah. You know, um, how much is, is the book? $20. Whoo. For a book? Eh. I think we're going to go out to eat. It's funny. We won't spend twenty dollars on our brain, but we'll spend twenty dollars on our stomach, right? Yeah, wonder why people notice one more than the other. Okay, that wasn't. That, I'm just saying. Anyway, um, I hope you'll invest in those. If you if you're like me, you say I just want to I just want to learn and grow and develop. We 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 just found in our in our warehouse, and I had this last time I was here, and I didn't know we had any more of these left. But uh, we're cleaning out our warehouses, and we found about 200 of these big coaching sets. We put them now on little USB drives. But we have uh, the original uh, coaching set. We had we had about 200. I think they sent me about 20 of them here. And what this is, this isn't for everybody. This is for people like me that really want to grow and learn. And it's one thing to read the book, but it's another thing to really dig down, to kind of do a deeper dive into it. And if you're like me, you want to do a deeper dive, I'll spend the next 90 days with you, the next three months with you, and uh, 12, 12 weeks. And what we'll do is we'll take this book, 12 Traits of the Greats, we'll take a trait a week, and I'll really coach you through those traits. So you'll, you'll read the book. Then how many remember better when you write stuff down? Anybody remember? That's me. I remember better when I write stuff down. So I made a workbook. 
to go with this. So there's a workbook. You can fill it out. I think they have a picture of all the stuff that's in this. I don't know if they do. If they do, they'll put it up there. But uh, you get a workbook here. Then there's 12 videos. So each week, you'll take a different video uh, for, for those traits like responsibility. Like in here, we talk about passion. Passion. The only, uh, when, when you understand passion, when you're doing what you love, what you love will reward you. When you really discover your passion, what you were created for, your assignment, your purpose, uh, uh, your, your, your destiny, it's amazing. So I ask you questions in here. There's about seven questions I ask you because what you hate may be a clue, may be a clue to your passion. Anyway, I talked to you all about that in the chapter on passion. And uh, we do all 12 tra- mindset, just the chapter on mindset. We take a whole week, work on your thinking, your mindset. And then there's 12 audio sessions. So you put those audios in to listen to over and over. So whatever week you're on, whatever trade it is, you just listen to that over and over until you get sick and tired of hearing it. When you get sick and tired of hearing it, listen to it a couple more times. Because when you get sick and tired of hearing something, you're just starting to get it. How many have ever watched a movie five times? How many saw things the fifth time you didn't see the first? You know what I'm saying? So, that, so there's four ways to learn. The book, the, the, the videos, the audios, and then the workbook. All that's back there. This whole big package, if we're at a corporate event, these things, they sell for like, a, a nine, I think it's nine ninety seven for this whole thing, for this 90-day program. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to give you a, a deal here at church because, uh, first of all, y'all wouldn't pay that much. Church people just won't pay that much. But anyway, um, isn't that funny? Like, we have the Bible that tells us how valuable wisdom is. But uh, anyway, um, and I'm going to do, do something crazy. Like I said, I think we only have 20 of these. Normally, it sells for $9.97. I was going to do it for $200 tonight, which is a, a, a crazy a good deal. But I'm going I'm to knock it down even a little bit more. I don't know where, where Stephanie is if she's in here. But uh, I'm going to do it for just $100 uh, tonight, you get the whole 90 day program for just a hundred dollars. You should at least say thank you. Because you should at least be grateful. I mean, if you don't think you're worth a hundred dollars, like I said, no one else will either. But actually, that's a that is a that's a really good deal. They're not even gonna believe I did that. Uh, you should probably wear a mask when you go buy it because you're robbing me. It's such a good deal. Um, but anyway, there's, there's only like 20 of them back there. So the first 20 people that get back there can get this whole thing. Uh, for, man, I can't believe I just did that. $100. It'll be a blessing. Or you can get both books for just uh, for $30. Uh, that's just such a good deal. Anyway, um, I'll be back there to sign books. I encourage you, invest in yourself. If, if you can only get one thing, get the, at least get the books. But if you can, invest in, in a little bit more in yourself. Like I said, uh, the value of wisdom. When you understand the value of wisdom, the difference it can make in your future. Anyway, that's back there. So um, number three, never stay satisfied with your current accomplishments. I got seven minutes to be finished. The greatest enemy of tomorrow's success is today's success. Thinking you've arrived. My grandfather just passed away a couple days ago. He's 96 years old. Uh, a month and a half ago, he was still preaching. He preached. I got a video of him preaching at church just a month and a half ago. Still going, 96 years old. I walked in a few weeks ago. He's reading a book. I said, Grandpa, what you reading? He showed me the book. It was a self-help book. I'm like, Grandpa, you're 96. What else are you going to do? He said, well, I'm not dead yet. I love that. 96, he's still growing and learning. You know, Colonel Sanders was in his mid-60s when he started KFC. Forbes magazine just named it, the I think, number three uh, uh, fast food restaurant in the world globally. And he was 65 when he started it. Morgan Freeman, the actor, was in his mid-50s when he got his first acting job. So to think, you, oh, well, I'm too old. I can't do it. I, I just no. It, it's it's not over till you, till you say it's over. Uh, don't stay satisfied, satisfied with where you're at. Successful people don't just sit back. They understand wins, just like losses, are temporary, and so they got to understand. You got to keep growing. Some things get you to the top. Other things keep you there. Right. So you got to refuse to settle where you are. Uh, keep moving. Kevin Durant said that hard work beats talent. When talent fails to work hard. Hard work beats talent when talent fails 
See, it, it's just got to put in the you got to put in the work. You can have all the talent in the world, but until you do something with it, nothing's going to change. Okay, here's a good example. Um, so your team wins the Super Bowl, right? Wait, that's not a good example here because you don't have a team. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, still too soon. I don't know. Anyway, okay. Even when you had a team. Okay, you still wouldn't understand because they didn't win the Super Bowl. But anyway, a team wins the Super Bowl. What happens? What happens? They go to Disney World, yeah. But then they start practicing, right? They get a couple weeks off, but they start practicing to prepare because they understand wins, just like losses, are temporary. Just because you were the champion last year doesn't mean you're going to be the champion again next year. And so you got to keep putting in the, putting in the work. Uh, enjoy the success briefly but then move on to greater things move on to greater things so anyway there, there's a whole lot of other traits that we talk about in here that i don't have time to get into tonight focus the only reason people fail broken focus you want to destroy someone's dream give them another dream break their focus get them going two different directions uh you, you always be pulled toward your dominant thoughts uh, all that's part of all that's part of focus uh, courage courage is another one I love courage. Uh, uh, courage, we celebrate it. Uh, we admire it. Everybody wants it. Some people have it. What is courage? I think courage is the ability to be a person of action. It takes courage. It takes courage. My goodness. We could say, hey, this, this is fine. We don't need any more room than this. I mean, we, we're, we're happy. Everyone, we're doing great, great service. No, it takes courage as a leader to go, you know what? We're going to keep growing. We're going to enlarge. We're going to, we're going to uh, uh, even before the faith, even before we got all the money in. And, and the money, we got all the money uh, that we need to, to knock this wall out and build, build it. Uh, just some of it's still in your pocket, but <laughs> we've got it all. It's just, it's just everybody doing their part. But, but a, a, a courageous leader says, you know what, let's go ahead and start busting some holes in the wall. Right now, just let's just son, like, bring hammers and everyone hit a hole in the wall. Uh, because what we're doing it. That takes. I love a courageous leader. I love a courage. It reminds me of the captain of a ship. Young man comes to the captain. He says, "Captain, captain, there are five enemy ships on the horizon." Captain said, "Young man, bring me my red coat." brought the captain his red coat and he put on the coat they started fighting they started fighting until they destroyed all five of the enemy ships the young man said captain can i ask you a question he said why did you ask for your red coat young man uh, captain said young man the red coat was in case during the fight i was shot or if, if i was stabbed and i began to bleed the men wouldn't notice me bleeding and they would keep fighting with courage and with, with bravery. Wow. Man, the, the young man said, Captain, that's amazing. You're the courageous one. You wouldn't even worry about yourself. You'd just keep fighting. That, that's amazing. You're the one with the courage. A couple of days later, the young man comes back. He says, Captain, Captain, there are 20 enemy ships on the horizon. And the captain said, young man, bring me my brown pants. So, it's amazing what a little courage, what a little courage can do. Listen, people, people of greatness, people that accomplish great things, like I said, they aren't afraid of failure. They just, they just are willing to take another shot. They aren't, they aren't afraid of, of what other people are going to think. Like I said, most successful people have a few failures on their resume. They just get back up. They, get, they don't lose heart. They're persistent. They're persistent. They never, ever give in. I'd encourage you, don't give up. Why, why, why would God want us to succeed? Three reasons I think God wants you to succeed. Number one, I think he wants you to succeed so that other people can see what happens when you follow his principles. Our life is an example. So everything we do, people are watching. You're a Christian. They're watching how you, how you do what you do. 
and is this stuff really working for you or is it not working for you? So I think, I think our success is an example that God's principles work. Amen. Number two, I think God wants you to succeed so you can take care of yourself. It's hard to help others if you can't even help yourself. It's hard to be a blessing to others if you can't even, it, it, the abundant life, the ultimate life that God promised, it, 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 it's, it's not that everything's going to be perfect. There's always seasons. It, and like I said, John 16, 33, in the world you'll have some trials and tribulations, but you, 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 you're of good cheer. You know that you're going to win in the end. It's all going to be fine. So I think part of our success, God's plan for our abundant life is so we can enjoy ourselves a little bit. I don't think God wants us struggling Year after year, like I said, there'll be seasons, but it's not God's plan for your whole life. The third reason I think God wants you to succeed is so you can fulfill the Great Commission. So that you can be blessed to be a blessing. So that you have the money to say, hey, Pastor, put me down for 50000 pa Pastor, put me down for 5000 I want to help build. I want to help build. I want to help the vision go forth. I want to help us accomplish what we need to accomplish. So God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing. He wants to help you create well so that you can establish his covenant and so that you can help others and help build his house. And so I, I think all that is just important. So I think it's God's plan. And he said, if you commit your plans to me, Proverbs 16, I will cause your plans to succeed. How many want God causing your plans to succeed? So you, first thing you got to do is you got to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, like I said, you can't leave where you're at until you decide where you'd rather be. You can go to the airport, planes flying all over the world. But until you decide where you want to go, you're still going to be at the airport. They don't sell your ticket based on where you're at. They sell your ticket based on where you're going. So the first you got to decide is where it is you want to go. And then once you have a plan, now you, here's what I have found too. When you have a plan, all your decisions become clearer. Once I decide where I want to go, now I can start making decisions. They're so much easier because now I know where to buy my ticket. I didn't know where to buy my ticket. I was just at the airport until I decided I wanted to go to Hawaii. I was like, look, could I go to Alaska? Could I go to Dallas? I could go to Boston. I could go. No, once I decided Hawaii, now I know where to buy my ticket. I'm buying a ticket to Honolulu. Somebody shout, Honolulu. Oh, I want to go there. <laughs> anyway, uh, now I know what to pack. I know what to, my decision of what to pack, and I'm going to pack flip-flops. I'm going to pack a, a big heavy jacket. I'm not going to Alaska. I'm going to Hawaii. Once you decide where you want to go, everything else becomes clear. And, and when you make a plan, you always put yourself in a better position. Because whenever you plan, you always plan to succeed. So just having a plan puts you in a better position. And then you take your plan, you commit it to the Lord. How do you do that? Through prayer. I've got a plan. God blesses the plan. And now you have greater success and you can accomplish all the, th the things God's put in your heart to do and to accomplish. And through that, you build his house. Put first the kingdom of God, then everything else. The, the car you wanted, that boat, whatever it may be. God doesn't mind you having that, but that, that's not the reason for his success. He blesses you to be a blessing. And in the process of that, it's amazing what you can do and what God will do through you. Amen. I hope that. I hope you got something that helped you tonight. <laughs> Let me just pray for you real quick, and then Pastor will come and, and, and close out. Like I said, I'll be I'll be in the the back there. I hope you'll pick up some of these resources to uh, to to help you and to to be a blessing. We can spend some time together and learning and growing and that kind of thing. But um, Father, I thank you tonight that you do have greater plans for us. Plans to prosper us, not to harm us. To give us a hope and a future. You made plans for every one of us. Father, we thank you.